All right, guys, welcome. I am beyond excited, my tribe, to be able to have the honor to share this episode with you guys, episode six, with Clean Cut Nutrition, Lori Sawyer and Karen Boscaino. So guys, check this out. I'm gonna give you a quick little introduction of these two amazing and badass women that I've had the honor of knowing for a couple of years. So Lori Sawyer earned her bachelor's of science degree in movement studies and exercise science with a concentration in athletic training from East Strawberry University in Pennsylvania. She then earned a master's of arts degree in exercise science from Montclair State University in New Jersey. After graduating, Lori took a position at Seton Hall University as an athletic trainer for two years. She then moved to Los Angeles to take a position as a staff athletic trainer at UCLA in 2001. While at UCLA, she traveled with the women's basketball team and was directly responsible for training the women's tennis team and the 2003 National Championship Women's Water Polo Team. Damn! Mm -hmm. As an athletic trainer, Lori has focused on injury prevention, rehabilitation, and sports-specific training. She has developed a well-deserved reputation in the field for bringing athlete, athletes back to injury quicker and safer than before. Since undergraduate school and through her career, Lori has traveled, pe uh, tra trained people from every walk of life to help them improve their lifestyle and achieve their specific goals. When her oldest son was born, she wanted to stay at home with him but didn't want to end her professional career. So Mommy Moose Fitness was born. <laughs> now with three beautiful boys, she has transitioned her career to help families create healthy lifestyles through fitness and nutrition. She has helped hundreds of clients in her career. She not only focused Mommy Moves, but created Mommy Runs and extreme mom boot camp classes. Lori is a fitness influencer for the woman's apparel company, Grace by Grit. Boom, baby. She was a former fitness com uh, columnist for the online parent website, The Family Grew, and was a former mom blogger for Meridian Healthcare Systems, Meridian Mom, um, Mom Turger. Montourage. Montourage. Like, <laughs> guys, just so y'all know, it's the Latina in me, you know, right here. <laughs> Montourage website. She has numerous speaking um, engagements under her belt, including regional athletic training conferences and Meridian events. She also has filmed a stroller fitness class for an MTV reality show, which you're going to have to talk about that because I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's hear it. Um, building an online nutritional program that everyone can take something from no matter where they are in their next fitness goals. And thank you, Lori. And next, 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 we have K Karen. How do you say your last name? Boscano. I want to say Boscano. Okay. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> That's better As a personal trainer group exercise instructor, sports and weight loss nutritionist, and health coach um, lives in and lives in Little Silver, New Jersey. She began her college career at the University of Hartford, where she met some of her oldest friends to date. She did transfer back to Long Island, where she grew up, up and graduated with her bachelor's degree in communications from CW Post. After graduating, she worked for Young and Rupicam in New York City for five years, managing creative and clients on several different pieces of business. Her desire to be in the fitness industry was always present, so she decided to get certified in 2001 as a personal trainer and change careers completely. She left Young and Rubicam all together and focused on building her fitness clientele. 
It started in New York City, then after having her first daughter move to Hoboken. Come on, tell me. Tell me, how do you say that? Hoboken. Hoboken. <laughs> oh, y'all gave me all these words. <laughs> Which opened her to new opportunities. She created stroller classes for new moms so she can work and stay at home with her daughter. The classes grew and did her platform for fitness. After the birth of her second daughter, it was time for the suburbs, which brought her to Little Silver, New Jersey. Once again, she had to build her business from scratch. Karen had worked at the Atlantic Club and Red Bank for over 10 years, built a large clientele in personal training and branched out to group fitness classes, which became her passion. She coached running for half full marathons from beginners to novice. She then got her certification in sports nutrition and weight loss and her health coaching degree through Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And the completion of the IIN degree, Karen gained the ability to understand her clients' individual health needs and emotional understanding of the clients in a more in-depth manner than just being physical activity. She learned through all these years working alongside Lori that the why, because people create unhealthy habits and how to change them in a major key to their members' success. The growth of the Clean Cut program over the years has been one of her greatest pleasures. Watching members get it. It is a fulfillment. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever it takes, welcome Lori Karen from Clean Cut Fitness. Nutrition. Dab it. Makes me want to go work out. <laughs> Because you do whatever it takes, no matter what, right? Ladies, I want to welcome you guys to the Bulletproof Mindset podcast. And before we begin, I want to take a moment and shine some light on you guys and acknowledge you and share with you why I have chosen you guys to be part of the Bulletproof Mindset podcast. And... I truly believe that you guys are a powerhouse, badass, mommies, strong, beautiful, confident women that have built your business in mind with your family because you can have it all and you've learned like, you know, I can't do it all. I need help. And how do we do that? And it's creating that mindset, that shift. And you've done that in the fitness industry, not only with your workouts, but teaching hundreds of women how to be able to keep that lifestyle with the nutrition, because it's not just that physical transformation. And when you said here, the women get it, you get it. And it is truly an honor to have you guys here to take today to share with our tribe of amazing, incredible women. So welcome, welcome, my ladies. Talk to me a little bit about like, how is it in your guys's home? You have children, you have your kids, you have to cook for them. And it's just that balance and flow of life Talk to me because I know everybody out here listening and most of us get, you know, they understand they have children. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's be realistic here, right? We are in a place and a situation in the world that is like none other that any of us have ever experienced. So we are trying to navigate this all together, you know, virtual school, homeschool, in school, hybrid school, who's going where, who's quarantined, who's this, and it's, it's, it's challenging. So just on top of, I have three boys, I have two girls. And anywhere between ages 15, 16, should be 16, 16, should be 16. Right. And oh, wow. 16. I, just like, whoa. I know. 
yeah. anywhere between ages 16 to nine and trying to navigate all of this, um, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. And, uh, you know, we're, we, I also think what, besides the scheduling part of it, the anxiety part that comes with it mm -hmm. is a major part, right? So we're all going through this and we are all going through it together, but you sort of feel like it's only happening to you, but everyone's going through it. And I think our kids feel like it's only happening to them. So we need to sort of ground them and make them realize that this is not against them. We're all doing this. And, you know, parts of it really, they do. They suck. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but it's tough. <laughs> yes, it's yes. Tough, you know, and, and when, when you're going through with your kids and they're like, but, 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 and you, you say to them, I don't want to say no, because in real life, I wouldn't have to say no. But right now I do, and I need you to help me not, not say no and make the right choices. So I think it's really difficult to navigate your children's anxiety and their level of understanding because they're like, yeah, it's not going to happen to me, but you are trying to protect them. So it doesn't happen to them. And I think that's a big part. And you know, that, that leads into how you feel in your day and taking care of yourself and what you can control. So we always tell our members, like, let's start with the thing that we can control and it's taking mm -hmm. care of ourselves. We can't control if our kids are going to school tomorrow, if they're going to, you know, not go where they say they're going to go and their friends aren't going to be there and their pods are going to be small. It's hard. It's just a really hard thing to do. So I, I like to think that one thing that we could do for ourselves is control what we put in our mouth, how we exercise, how we sleep. And I think when we start there, the other things that we just talked about aren't as big as they can be. So I think that's a huge I do. Part. And I think when you're feeling better about yourself and you are, as Karen said, eating better, sleeping better, feeling better, you have better management of your children and your household and, and your life, right? Because we know how cranky we can get when we're not feeling well. We're not feeling our bodies properly. And then on top of that, you have kids running around all over the place. You have, you know, everything we just said, hybrid, this, house is a mess, this. Like, if you just fuel a little bit better, sleep a little bit better, work out to get those endorphins going, you can balance everything a little bit better. And just like Karen said, like you can, we can control that. So I think losing control of one part of what's mm -hmm. happening in the world and, but really harnessing in on what we can control is going to be key right now for everybody. And it's hard, but you got to control it. And I actually think with this situation where it's interesting, like there are some positives, right? You have, you have a little bit more time, right? You, you do as much as you think you don't, but like, I'm not dropping my kids off and picking my kids up from school any day. Like, yes. like it's completely different, right? So you need to plan your day differently. Yeah. And that's, that goes with everything that goes with food, exercise, sleep, all those things. But if you take this as a boo-hoo for me or throw your hands up in the air and say, I'm going to deal with it when the world opens up again, yeah. it's taking a really long time for that to happen. So that's a really long time for really bad habits to start to form. Well, remember we had a client that said to us, you know, everyone's gaining the quarantine 15. She goes, I dug deep and I did what I was supposed to do. And I took control and I lost 15 mm -hmm. yeah. because, because she took advantage of the situation that she is going to be home and can make clean foods and has time to work out and totally pivoted her mindset, mindset, right? Pivoted everything right up here and actually took the time to lose the weight instead of the woe is me. Right. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep baking and eating brownies and blah, 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 because I'm home because that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. But what if we're supposed to get fit? What if there's a reason that we're supposed to eat healthy and there's a reason that everybody's slowed down? to really find out what's important. Yeah, so, it's yes, yes. two weeks, it was, it's not two weeks anymore. <laughs> yeah. Flatten the curve in two weeks is not two weeks. So we all have to realize that this is our reality right now. And it's time to just like shake it off and just come up with a new plan. Yeah. It's like, what are you gonna do about it? And it's true. So with the people that you've been working with, with the women that you have been working with for a while, especially during the whole quarantine, right? They're working from home. So they're literally sitting sometimes like the kitchen is where they have to work and they have their laptop and the kitchen's right there, refrigerator is there. How do you help, help them help us, right? Not go to that refrigerator and try to fill that void and having that bad relationship with the food because it's hard, right? It can be a challenge if we don't shift that perspective. Yeah. I think, you know, the number one thing you have to do is pause. When you get to that refrigerator, 
pause. Why are you there? Are you mindlessly eating? Are you hungry? Is it time to eat? And then have a plan. Right. That's Pausing and planning. Yep. Like I think a, a great tip, I mean, just take this for what it is. And it might sound silly the night before, write down exactly what you plan on eating the next day and the times mm -hmm. you're going to eat it. And when you're sitting at your computer and you're like getting pulled away and you want to procrastinate a little bit and you want to just kind of shift because you don't feel like starting the next project and you walk into the kitchen and you look up the clock and it's 1113 and you're not allowed to eat until 1215, don't, don't just go back to your computer. Yeah. Right. Just, just shift it. And the more you practice it, the easier that becomes, right? The first couple of times you're going to be like, ah, I'm hungry. I won't think I'm hungry. The, you know, by the fourth, fifth, sixth time, seven days later, you're sort of, you, you kind of crush the habit a little bit. Yeah. And I think that it, that also goes back to what foods are you feeling yourself with? Right. Are you eating empty calories? Are you eating simple sugars that are going to spike you and then drop you? And then you're hungry in an hour. I think fueling yourself with the proper foods as well and keeping yourself full and balancing all your foods out. Yeah. Is going to change that mind shift as well. Then you go to the refrigerator from habit. Right. And you're like, whoop. Right. Am I really hungry right now? Right. Is yeah. this just habit? Isn't it uh, the idea of this? And I love this because this is how we, we teach and what we, what we teach to eat and how it works is that after like two or three weeks of working with us, we always get the comment like, oh my God, I wasn't thinking about my next meal. And oh. I'm, that's key because when you're not constantly thinking about food, you're just doing what you're doing. You're reading, you're working, you're doing your emails. You're not constantly having this like, you know, devil angel thing on your shoulder because it's not even, you're not even hungry. You're not even thinking about it. Yeah. yeah putting so very, that's a really important thing. Yeah. So fueling and finding the foods that keep you satisfied that work for you is a huge component of what we do. Yeah. And I think the key to that is that that's not going to be the same for everybody. Right. Yes. So you can pull something out of a magazine that says seven day menu guide, eat this and you're going to lose weight and you're going to be fantastic. Right. <laughs> and it, it, day three, <laughs> day three says salmon for dinner. And you're like, hate salmon. Hate it. Yeah, yeah. I'll eat it. I'll eat it because it's on the seven day plan. What do you do on day eight? You go back to your Costco pizza <laughs> mm. or your, you know, whatever your bad foods are. Right. And you're not learning anything. So one menu guide, one program doesn't work for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's finding the foods that work in Karen's body and my body and your body. And what satisfies Karen may not satisfy me and vice versa. So finding the foods that keep your body full yes. and you satisfied in your world. Think about someone who works nine to five and then think about a nurse that works a 12 hour shift. Mm. It's going to be totally different of what works for them. So I think that's a huge missing component in all these plans out there. Yeah. They're all this cookie cutter and it doesn't work for everybody. Mm -hmm. So people get frustrated and are like, screw it, whatever. It didn't work. Didn't work. I tried. It didn't work. work. Right. It didn't work. I'm just going to go back to my woe is me. Or this was working, but it was so hard to do. If it's yeah. so hard to do, you're never going to stick with it ever. Yeah. Right? It has to be that maintainable. Yeah. Exactly. What yeah. can you keep up? What is working for you and eat according to your goals? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then, what do you think I think about that yo-yo? I think we kind of just talked about it a little bit more. Why don't we all stick to a plan? Why do we say, okay, we got 12 weeks and I'm going to stick to this plan for 12 weeks and then 12 weeks hit and then it's over. And then why? Do I, we I think Personally, I think in, in other programs, um, not every program, I'm not saying yeah. that we, you know, I, but what we do differently is we teach you. So at the end of six weeks, you know exactly why you're eating what you're eating and why that keeps you full and why that made you hungry. And, oh, I know what I'm doing because I'm going to have wine tomorrow night. Yes. So if I'm allowed to have wine tomorrow night because I'm doing X, Y, and Z today, then you're look, then you want to do X, Y, and Z so that you can work and enjoy that wine. And then, what, and then what you do the next day, right? Because yes. one, one day of wine, whatever you're doing, is not going to kill you. It's what you do the day before yep. and what your plan is the next day. Exactly. And having a plan is what's going to be key. So like education, number one, education and knowing, again, how Karen just said it works in your body. And I think one other crucial thing is a community. Mm -hmm. You're Ooh. sitting at home with a 12-week plan and you're like, all right. I'm not sure how to do this, or I don't, I don't know what this means. And then, okay, I'll try it uh, nine, but this is just really hard. And I, I'm not sure. Forget it. 
if you have a community of like-minded people around you, you're going to stay more accountable. Support. Or they're going to hold you to that mindset. So education and community are huge in sticking with something. And having the ability to get your questions answered. Yep. Right? So without, you know, like it could be as simple as like, okay, so if I eat this in the morning, am I still allowed to have this at night? And then the next day, am I allowed to have? Yes. Yes. Yes or no. And why? Not just yes or no. And like Lori and I always say this, like, we don't want to tell you to eat this because we told you so. We want to tell you why. Yes. We want you to know exactly why a bagel isn't good for you. You know, it's not. Everyone knows a bagel is not good for you. Yeah. But why is a bagel not good for you? And I love a bagel. Okay, so let's figure out how you're going to have that bagel every other week. And you're going to look forward to it. Because yeah. if it's so strict, you're not going to stay on it. Yeah. If you are creating room for the things that you love by doing most of the other things right, you're even, you're balanced. And that's manageable. And that's maintainable. Saying yeah. never is never going to work. And being perfect is really boring. So yeah. I just think if you give your, if you're kind to yourself, you give yourself some wiggle room, you screw up, it's okay, let's erase it. Let's just not keep, you know, if you screw up once, don't throw the whole day away. Yes. It's so easy to fix one meal. It's so much harder to fix an entire day or week. So if you just shift and know that it's not, it, it's not a never, the cheat's going to come again. The wine will be there. It's all coming again. It's just a matter of what you do on the other sides of them. Right. And if you screw up once, then a lot of people will say, all right, forget it. I'm going to start on Monday. And then they, they mess the whole weekend up. And then Monday comes around and they're not prepared. And they don't have a community to reel them back in. They're like, I didn't prep. I'll just grab this now. I'll start tomorrow. I'll start next week. And then now 15 pounds is on before they know it. So instead of having that community to hold them accountable and to practice everything that you learn in education, once you figure out what works in your body, it takes practice. Yes. Education, community, and practice because it's, it's not easy, but the more you practice it, the more it becomes, you've created bad habits. Why can't you create the good habits? You just have to practice yes. the good habits. And it's not always easy. No. But you know what? Like when it's not easy and you work through the not easy, how much better does it feel on the other side? Yeah. You know, and another thing to say to you, you know, a lot of, a lot of this is self-talk talk. So like, I, I always say it like as a race, right? If you're training for a 5k and you're trying to crush a time, and you're there and you're doing it and you have a half a mile left, are you going to stop or are you going to keep going? Yeah. If you make it through six weeks and you're feeling good and you get it, why would you stop? Yeah. Just keep going because what does it look like on the other side? What does the next goal look like? Imagine what that feels like. But that's a lot of self-talk, yeah. right? When you start to feel good, you start to loosen it up a little bit. You cheat a little bit before you know it, your old habits are coming mm -hmm. back in. But if you can visualize, like, imagine if I keep going, Imagine what that looks like. And that's what we do. We just do that for you. We're like, we keep pushing you back in line. Like, I just absolutely love that. And I'm going to piggyback on what Lori was talking about that the weekends come along. Like my, my tribe, my, my ladies, we hit hard, we work out. And I have that same mentality with the food, right? There's not just a diet, it's just a lifestyle, incorporating good food, good wholesome food. And then you're gonna incorporate something that you still really love, enjoy and have a glass of wine. Like I love my, my wine, so I incorporate it into what I'm doing, right? So the weekends come along and then other friends or other family member members that are not aligned with what their goals are, then they feel like, oh, screw it. I'm going to eat all this. Well, I already messed up one day or one dinner. I'm going to mess up the whole weekend. How do they snap out of it in order to get back to it the following day? Well, how do you coach the ladies to do that? Because I come across that all the time. I mean, I've been there, done that, right? Right. Like you're really good Monday through Thursday and then you're horrible Friday through Sunday. So you're actually just going in this, like, like you're on a, on a, on a hamster wheel. Like yeah. And it's like, Oh, I'm going to reward myself because I've been working so, so hard now Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Friday through the weekend, I'm going to throw it out the window. And then here we go again. Right. That's coached up here. Right. Because you have to, just like we were saying, you can take that one day and enjoy yourself, but how are you going to feel on Monday? You're not going to feel good. You're going to be bloated. You're going to be sluggish. Right. And just like Karen said, like, how are you going to feel on the other side? So really, if you plan 
and enjoy yourself. So let's just say we decide to go out and we have an all out day Saturday and we go out on Saturday night and on Sunday you get up, you're not feeling great. Like it's not an option to go get a bacon, egg and cheese. It's an option to eat something comforting, but healthy. And it's not an option to move. You have to move. You have to work out. I don't care what it is. You have to move. Right. And you have to, you know, you, you can't be like, I'm going to start on Monday because you're going to feel so bad on Sunday. It's just going to roll into the Monday and Tuesday. So it's that practice and the mindset of, set, of, of not making it four days, making it a day, enjoying it. And not finding excuses. I think that's yep. a huge yep. part, right? Like, like if you choosing to cheat, you've taken away the choice to move. You got, you got, you got to pick one. it, right? Like that. if I'm going to do this, I'm fine with doing this, but I'm, even if it's 30 minutes, 20 minutes, you have to do something. So, and I also think coming up with a plan, like knowing the next day, like what you're going to do, like if it is a bacon, egg and cheese, it's a bacon, egg and cheese on sprouted bread and it's nitrate free. It's not not eating. Yeah. It's just eating the clean version of it, satisfying you so that you are full and you're not putting chemicals in your body and that you could just kind of bounce back and you move on because listen, we've all been hungover. We've all had good, we've all been food coma hungover, yeah. right? Like not even like some days you're drinking and it's fine, but you just overate the next day, just shaking off that meal is harder. Yeah. So look, I used to be the same way. Like I would like my weekends were like a free for all. And then it would come Monday and I always felt lousy. And it started taking me into like Tuesday, Wednesday to feel better. Yeah. And I was so tired of that. Cause then I never really felt good. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to pick a day because one day is easy. Yeah. Because then you can, then by Monday or Tuesday, you feel good again. Like yeah. I, to have to undo for three days, for three days, that's not fun. No. I right? Don't. One day where you're feeling a little off because you had a good a cheat, big cheat, a big, big weekend, no yeah. big deal. And let me piggyback on that because Karen made a great point. Like, just it's not a punishment to eat healthy, good foods. Right? right? Yeah. Like, we, we, have a, we have an awesome bacon, egg, and cheese, bacon, egg, bacon, egg, and avocado sandwich that is clean and healthy and approved and yummy that it, to me, I love it. Like it tastes so good and you can t- feel the nutrients being soaked up in your body. Yeah. And there's clean, yummy, good, healthy options of that it tastes really good. That when you go back to eat something not good, you're gonna taste it. Yes. Like, let's just say like, like, uh, like a peanut butter, for example, right? Like if you eat, if you're used to eating a really good, healthy, yummy, natural peanut butter and you go take a bite of like an old school Jeff or something like that, that. Say. <laughs> right? You're going to taste, taste, you're going to taste I the chemical can. in it. Yeah. Right. So it's like, once your body gets used to those clean foods, it's going to crave those clean foods. Like I know when I'm lacking, like I crave a green juice or I crave some, whatever. It could be any sort of healthy, yummy foods, right? Like your body's going to get used to that. It's going to want it. You're going to feel a difference with it. And it tastes really good. Clean doesn't have to be boring. And I also think like you were saying, like, how do you stay on it? And I think that there's so many different ways to look at it. Again, a lot of it's mind talk, education, knowing the why, I think is a huge, huge part in having mm-hmm. support, right? You, mm-hmm. Without, without those things, you're not going to do it, right? Without the, without the knowledge, but the longer you do it, yeah. you don't crave. I don't ever, I never really sit around. I've never sat and been like on a Friday, night, like, I'm like, I'm craving pizza. It yeah. doesn't, it's just not it. Do I love pizza? Sure. Yes. If my family's getting pizza, do I have a slice? Sure. Yes. But I'm never saying to myself like, oh, talk me out of pizza, please. You, I just, you don't have to talk me out of anything. Mm-hmm. You have to like talk me into it. You have to be like, come on, let's have French fries with me today. And I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll do it. I'm in. <laughs> uh-huh. you know, but you're never like, oh, you know what I want today? You know, unless I'm planning for it, I'm excited because I know I'm going to a specific restaurant, which we don't do anymore. But like, <laughs> yeah. you know, just... If you know it, it's your favorite meal, right? That's totally different. But that's when a practice. When you're clean for so long, yeah. you crave good stuff. You do. And I, I might sound like a crazy person right now, but but it's, it's true. A, it's true. I, it's true. I agree. The more you start taking in the processed foods yep. and the sugars, your body craves that. It's like a drug. Mm-hmm. It really <laughs> is. Sugar is awful. Sugar, you know, listen, sugar is a chemical. It causes cancers. It causes disease. It causes heart disease. It's, you know, it, it is just not good. <laughs> I mean, and, literally sugar is food for cancer. Yeah. Yeah. So like the more, you know, the more you're going to be like, oh, wait, do I have too much sugar on my diet? Right. Like it's okay to have some, like we're yeah, not saying, yeah. you know, and we obviously yeah. have tons of options of healthy versions of things to help with a sweet tooth. Cause we all have them. 
most females have them in general. Yeah. In general, we do just our, com- our chemical makeup. We just yeah. tend to like sh- sugars. So I just think understanding it is such a big part because there, then you just, it's a, you're able to make the right decision. When you're looking at your plate and you know why it looks the way it looks, you're like, ooh, I'm doing the right thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. And the ways that then sugar and gut health are huge. I was about to say that gut health. A lot of my females talk about that. Can you explain a little bit more on that yeah, and I mean, what, what your mentality, your mindset on that? Yeah. Your gut is genuinely your second brain. So have you ever heard of the saying, your gut feeling? It's a true feeling. There is actually a nerve that runs from your gut to your brain and back. The messages keep going back and forth. And if that message is wrong, the message is saying pizza, 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 fried chicken. Yeah. When the message is right, it's like protein, veggies. Like I know it's, it's a true thing. And the message, the only way for the message to be correct is to not eat processed foods, to take care of your gut, take a probiotic, have your apple cider vinegar, drink all your water, um, you know, whole grain foods, having your vegetables, all those things are what give you that healthy gut. That healthy gut is basically what it means is that you have really good bacteria. You're going to have some bad, but you want the good to be better than the bad. And the, the bad, bad feeds on the sugar, the sugar. Mm -hmm. So now the bad bacteria feeds on the the sugar (laughs) and now your gut's starting to break down because there's more bad bacteria than good bacteria. Yeah. And disease sets in. Brain fog. Brain fog. So like when your gut is not clean, um, it's, I think you kind of heard the word leaky gut. Like I'm not saying that everyone has it, but when you're really destroying and doing things for a long period of time that are really bad for you, the lining of your, of your stomach is really, really thin. It's armored really, really strong. But when someone breaks through that armor, it's really easy to poke a hole in that. When that happens, it, it, all that bad bacteria is not just in your gut anymore. It's now floating in your bloodstream. So you have joint pain, you have brain fog, you're tired, you're craving bad food. So if you need to anything for you into doing the right thing, it really starts with your gut, Yep. right? All of your health starts in your gut. So just starting off by saying, you know what? I wanna eat clean whole foods because you can't outsmart a bad diet. You can't out exercise a bad diet. You can out exercise overeating healthy food, right? But if you're putting chemicals in your body, no matter how much running you do, you can't get rid of a chemical. So why should we put it in our bodies? That's it. We teach all of this. I mean, we're really passionate about it, obviously, (laughs) but but there's so many things that go into healthy eating. It's not just eat this, don't eat that. And I think too, Sorry, um, uh, Karen, I think to the mentality, I think the mental health, when you do eat healthier and eat better, your mental health is better. Oh gosh. Yes. With us and even, you know, kids Mm -hmm. and you guys have kids. How have you seen the difference with your children when they eat better and sleep better? Like, how is it? How do you, how do they react toward it? Yeah. Their moods. It is. And like my, I, we both, I mean, everyone has picky eaters and my little one's a really picky eater. And yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I try, I try to say things like, and she's a gymnast and I'm like, can we just play mm-hmm. around? Like I'd give you something different. I want to see how you feel when you go to gymnastics. Somebody gave me this tip one time because yeah. it was like, I'm so tired of Eggo waffles and Nutella. Um, <laughs> I just, it's so annoying. <laughs> but uh, you know, it is what it is. And I have to, you know, she's turning 13. I'm like, all right, listen, kiddo, we're, we're, we're changing this over. I just, you just got to try for me. And she's going to do it. And I'm, I want us, her to see how different she's going to feel. Like, like the color of her skin will change. Like you could see it in them. I think like for my 15 year old, for sure. Like once he, you know, I, my kids are all picky eaters, but they're, they're okay. They're okay. But once he realized working out and stepping up sports and that kind of yes. thing, uh, how much food makes a difference, oh my he God. wants it. Awesome. I think, I think you have to educate your kids. And even if you don't think they're listening, yeah. they are, they may not want to hear it, but it's going to be like that. And they're going to be like, mom, can you make me chicken and broccoli? Or, you know, I want what? a protein shake or, you know, and I'm like, La. <laughs> like, 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 oh my God, what did you just say? <laughs> and even though you don't think they're listening at the time, they do, they do. And they take all that in. Mm-hmm. So that was a big, big fine for me was that just keep pushing it just for me for a while I was just leaving veggies on the counter with some dips right? yeah and they may touch it one day and they may not but it was just sort of always there mm-hmm. and then I'd walk in and I'd see a few pieces gone here and there you're like yes 
Now, and I would leave like trail mix out on my counter, right? Mm -hmm. Like just, you know, and but don't say anything. Like, you know, just sometimes they'll walk by and grab it, you know? And I think sometimes when you push it too much, know that if your kid doesn't eat perfect, like, yeah. you know, yeah, it, sometimes like when, when it's too much, it, they'll be like, no, I don't want to hear it. So like, yeah. you know, the, I, th I think just putting it in their brains, putting it in their ear and, and then what you do, and what I, you do is I, important. And you get to, you're the one doing the food shopping. Right. So yes. control over yeah. it. So mm -hmm. like, I'm not saying not to buy Oreos, right? Like, but your kids are allowed to have two to three Oreos. They're not allowed to keep going and taking out the sleeve. Don't go to the couch with the bag of potato chips, like have one or two things that are like not great in your home, but you get to control it. Like most of the time you're buying goldfish or doing it because you think your kids want it. And if you didn't have them there, they probably wouldn't even know. They wouldn't. There. Yes. So just okay. dial that back and bring in the healthier version of it. Yeah. Because that's what I do. Like, I, like my daughter's friends come over. Like we love coming here because we always, we always know we can eat your stuff and it's healthy and they don't worry about it. Like whether it's my crackers because they're different kind of crackers or the hummus yeah. that they, it's interesting. Like the, the 16 year olds will be like, yay, you have these chips. <laughs> oh, I love it. Right. So they don't really get it, but like, they just, they can trust it because I bought it. Yeah. Right? So I think that that's something else to consider that you're doing the food shopping. Most of us are, you're, it's you know, you're true. Food shopping. So, we have that power and yeah, we yeah. are teaching our kids. I have almost a 13 year old and then my nine year old, both girls. And what I started doing, it's true, Lori. So I'll go to the grocery store. I'll take them with me. You know, I'll get fruits, veggies, all that good stuff, stuff that I know they're going to eat. And then I want to incorporate new stuff, strawberries, blueberries, whatever you name it. I'll wash them, clean them. And then I'll put them in the counter. Yep. yep. Or put them in the refrigerator. Yep. I'm like, hey, if you guys are hungry, you need something. It's already there. Oh, okay, cool. It's already washed. So they open the fridge. And they're like, oh, strawberries are right there. Grapes are right there. Pineapples right there. So that's, that literally is like the first thing they grab. And that's the first thing I grab. Yeah. I was just about to say that. So like we teach our, our women or anyone in our program, like if they're called grab and goes, like yes. if you are not prepared and you're starving, you're going to make a bad choice. If you're coming in the house and you're running back out and you're starving and you have your egg salad, chicken salad, tuna salad, whatever it is, and you're ready to go. You're going to go in, you're going to grab that. You, you're not going to go grab some pretzels and run out the door. Exactly. But if you also create something and your grab and go is something that you don't look forward to, you're also not going to eat it. Right. Yeah. So we got to find something that you like and that you look forward to. And like, even like in the real world before COVID, when we were carpooling and running around yeah. like crazy and whatever we were doing, right. I always keep like a bag of, they're actually the Trader Joe's chili lime cashews. They're my favorite. Ooh, okay. They're spicy, but I keep a bag of them in my car. Because I'm like, if I'm in the, you know, I, I if I'm need a little noshy something in the car, I can just grab a handful. They're spicy, so I'm not eating the whole bag. Yeah. But it's just enough to hold me, and they taste really yummy until I get home, right? Instead yeah. of like, oh, let me pop in a, the convenience store and grab whatever, or you know, like stop in the drive-through real quick, right? Yeah. Have something right there. There's no excuses if you're prepared. Then it's so much easier. Yep. And, there's, and everything is so easy now. Like we were just in Target this, sorry, this morning. We're doing like a, a fines, like, and products are so clean. It is so yeah. easy to enjoy good food with quality ingredients. Yeah. Like we, we were there for 45 minutes and we probably didn't even hit the whole store. Like no. it, it's just, it's easy. You know, yeah. vegetables are spiralized now, right? Cauliflower is riced, broccoli is shredded. You don't mm -hmm. have to do much. That is true. Saves time. Yeah, it does save time. And, you know, you got to find, find your spot where you like have your pantry staples, right? I know when I go to the store, like, and I'm low on things, like I know exactly what I'm getting, but I have in my, my refrigerator or my pantry all the time. Yeah. You know, of course I'm getting new fun things or whatever, but I know what my pantry staples are. I know that they're going to be there. I know that if I'm out of something, I know that I can whip something up with my pantry staples Yeah, and it's there and it's safe. Yeah. Yep. What do you guys think about fasting? I love fasting. We fast Talk to me about yeah. fasting. I've always have my ladies ask me about the fasting. And I guess there's a misconception sometimes when it comes to that. Like, should I really eat in the morning? Like, is it based on the person? Is it healthy, not healthy? Like, what do I do? Um, and then 
in fasting, you know, you have your calories, how much you should be consuming, right? Within those hours. Mm -hmm. And some people just go crazy and eat literally everything and anything, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's still, you still have to eat clean. But if you want to incorporate something you enjoy and love, it has to be within that. It's not McDonald's every day or your bad fatty food, right? Well, I think the first misconception is that you have to have something when you get up to kickstart your metabolism. That's not true. Yeah, that's not true. Um, and fasting, like when you look at the hours, like, again, you may have a nurse who works from 12 to 12. You may have somebody who fasts at these hours. You have someone who fasts at a different, different time. Um, fasting can work in anybody's schedule. It doesn't have to be, let's stop eating at nine o'clock and let's start eating at noon the next day. See, that's right? So yeah. you can, Right. You can fast, you know, depending on your life and your schedule. And it really is important what you put in your mouth after your fast and what you're eating through the day, because let's just say fast and you're like, okay, I'm going to have my, I'm going to break my fast. We like to break our fast with something very low carb. So we don't spike our insulin levels too high. Proteins, veggies, healthy fats. Right. But then we want to make sure that there's healthy fats in that first meal. Right. Because why? Because those healthy fats take longer to digest you're burning calories digesting those healthy fats, and you're not going to be ravenous in an hour. If you have a high, a high carb that's going to spike you up, and then you're going to crash, right? You're throwing everything off, right? So like, if you have something with the healthy fat in that first meal after, you, after when you're breaking your fast, you're going to be fuller a little bit longer. So you're not really missing, right? And you're not like, oh my God, I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm sorry. If you have to fuel yourself with proper foods when you're intermittent fasting, or you're going to be starving and you're just going to be like, F it, I'm going to have the brownies. And if you're fasting and you're, and if, if you're fasting and it's like, you're ravenous before you're breaking your fast and it's not working for you. And all of a sudden you find yourself eating everything. Yeah. You fasted too long for you. Maybe you need to practice it like everything else. So I think it's a, it's, it's a great tool. Yeah. It's free. You don't have to pay for it. You don't <laughs> have to do it every day. And you know, it, it works and it gives your body a chance to just settle. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. It takes hours and hours for your body to digest. So if we constantly give it a food, the digestive system is the one that's always, always working. So imagine giving your body time for all mm -hmm. the other systems to regenerate themselves and to get, woo, and they're excited and everything is cleaning itself out. And now you start again from clean. So it's a great, there's so many reasons why we love it. Um, it gives you room for a cheat, right? Like yeah. if, if you're having, like if you have a big cheat one night and you can do it and the next day comes, like if you fast a little bit longer, like I think about it this way, right? Like, like people are like, well, do, do I have to work out? Do I have to eat before I work out? And I'll be like, well, did you eat yesterday? Did you eat dinner last night? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, you're fine. Right? Like you didn't use up everything that you had the day before. Mm -hmm. Right. So basically, I mean, we all, you, you know, food is food and calories are calories. They're fuel. It's fuel. It's pleasure. We love food. Yeah. But in, well, honestly, when you bring it down to what it is, it's our, it's our energy. It's our fuel. Yeah. So what type of fuel do you need? Right. How much do you need? So when you actually don't use food as fuel, your body's amazing. It's going to find the next source of fuel. And the next source of fuel is going to be your proteins and your fats. Right. So if you have stored fat, your body's going to figure out how to go. So the longer you fast, the harder it is to, for your body to work, to tap into it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just a way of thinking about it that like, if you overate the night before, just laugh and say to yourself, I have plenty of stored food. That's like, true. I'm not going to put anything in right now because I had way too much crumb cake last night and it was delicious. All I need to do today to try to get myself back to even is move, move extra, and water. maybe water, water, <laughs> and maybe not don't, you know, skip my meal because I have plenty of energy that I need to use first before I put, before I put more energy in. Yeah. So if you start to think about why you're using it and there's so many different reasons why you would use mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And when you say they could have, would they say, Oh, I'm not going to eat, but I'm just going to have coffee. Yeah, what do coffee. you think about that? Coffee, water, Coffee's yeah. fine. Fasting. Yeah. It's when you are having a coffee with uh, two tablespoons of sugar and all this stuff in it. That's the problem. Yeah. Right. So there's a, there, we were just, we, we were just out at Target and there's a Starbucks in the Target and we were looking at the menus. Right. So 
Starbucks is amazing. I mean, like they have, you know, grande drinks that, that are 480 calories. That's nuts. Like just because it's coffee doesn't mean that no. it's clean. Drinking those right? The amount of sugars and milks and everything else that they've added to some of their stuff. Don't get me wrong. Like a, I had a coffee with a little bit of organic half and half. It was great, you know, but depending on what you're getting there, you need to be aware again of knowing what you're putting in your body. Yeah. And you can have your coffee. You can have water. Just don't, just don't eat something that your body has to work to digest. Yeah. Right. If you're keeping it low and you're keeping it like under your 50 calories, which your coffee is, unless yeah. you're having like three heaping tablespoons of sugar, <laughs> but you know, just enjoy your cup of coffee, drink your water, move on, and then break your fast with a good fat protein and a vegetable that satisfies you so that you're not eating. Mm -hmm. I hate when they call it the feeding period. It just sounds a little weird. Like you have your feeding <laughs> uh -huh. period. I think it just sounds really weird, <laughs> but you're not eating the entire feeding period. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like I fast most days and I have two meals a day and probably a snack. That's, yeah. that's how much I, you don't need as much as you think you need, especially when you're eating properly. Right. Yeah. You know, when you're eating the way you should be eating. Right. Mine are like nutrient dense meals. Right. Yeah. I mean, think about the United States of America and just, just think about the population and think about how all our lives and on a, in a normal world have been circled around food, parties, restaurants, the portion Ooh. sizes. I always tell the story that I was up in Canada for a half marathon race with friends and we went out the night before and we were going to have a, a glass of champagne and pasta. And we're all sitting there and we got our, we're having our drink and they come and they put the bowl down in front of us. And we all look down and we all look at each other. And it literally was like a cup of cooked pasta. That's a serving, by the way, cup of cooked pasta. Yes. That was in the bowl. And we all look at each other we're like, what the heck is this? Right. It was like five bites, but that's a serving of pasta. My friends, like that's it. When we have, when we have Sunday dinner, we go out for pasta. It is like five servings. Right. Plus sausage and meatballs and this and whatever else is in there. Right. And boom. And right. It's processed and it's not homemade. Right. And all but that's, that's, what, that's, that's what the culture we've created. Yeah. And we're at parties. It's always around the food. Again, food is fun, yeah, but it should be around the people, about the people you're with. Enjoy a little bit and walk away. You know, so our culture has created this yeah. concept of all this food. Yeah. And we really don't need as much as our, 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 you think. It's just what our culture has created. We like eat for entertainment. I know. We don't eat to fuel. It's always a party of food. Yeah. So like your experience with the little pasta was like, what the heck is this? I'm going to be <laughs> like hungry after this. Yeah, but yeah. that's how we should totally eat, right? Yeah. And even now with this whole COVID thing and building that immune system, right? And having that long vitality, Everyone, we're so worried about keeping our hands clean, which we should. That's what they taught us in elementary. Right. Why right. haven't we been doing that always? Like all of a sudden, exactly. COVID, and like now we have to like all of a sudden, like it's like teaching people to wash their hands. I'm like, like this, what were you doing before? This is a really funny <laughs> meme. I'm going to say this, then you have to go on. But this is a really funny meme. Yeah. I was like, now that we've all learned to wash our hands, now let's work next on our turning signals. And I was like, that's <laughs> really funny. That's awesome. Like, that is really funny. And I was like, it's so true. But it's so true. Like we have to make sure that we are armoring our insides, yeah. that we're fueling our insides yeah. to be able to fight anything, whether it be COVID, whether it be a flu, whether it be other diseases, whatever it is. So you know? true. And we need the immune system to be strong. Like, what do you guys recommend to boost that, especially like now? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, right now at COVID specific, vitamin D is huge. Yeah. They found that, um, patients, you know, with COVID, um, they found, um, a lot of them are lacking vitamin D and vitamin D is hard because you really can't get vitamin D from foods. Unless you eat like sardines all day. Right. Right. And like, we get it from the sun, right? Oh. So like, we get vitamin D from the sun, right. From the sun rays. And unfortunately now at least East coast, like the sun's Sorry. out, but the sun's, you know, it's like, it's cold here. Right. So yeah. a vitamin D supplement is key. Um, a vitamin D, a vitamin C, zinc, like any of those bait. And what am I missing? B, B, B complex, B12. So like C, D, um, B vitamin, zinc, like all the, the, the those basic immune boosting 
yeah. vitamins and minerals are key. And also remember, food is medicine. Right. I was just about to just say, like, like you said, food. You can get all this from food. Yeah. Except for the D. The D is hard. Yeah. 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 But you know, a lot of people don't. So you know that that supplementation is definitely important. But like when you're really eating properly, you know, our food is it's medicine. It's like it, it is it is our fuel. I agree. And we want to see Europe be even better. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Uh huh. Yeah. That is so <laughs> true. <laughs> think about Europeans like they're not overweight because no they treat food as like it's a pleasure but like they don't overindulge and their foods aren't processed the way that our foods are processed and their soils are different and you know it's just it's not gorging it's if, enjoying it. yes and yes. if you can look at like uh like a French wine versus a, a Napa Valley wine um uh, so my husband lived in Europe for a couple of years back and forth for work and he was like I had like a bottle and a half of wine last night and I felt awesome. I got up in, in Paris, right? Or whatever, because like the soil, the grapes, everything, they're, they're not chemical, they're not processed. There's not sugar added to their stuff there, right? Everything is pure. They yep. don't, well, Europeans go to the grocery store every day yep. and they buy what they're going to have for dinner and they make it or whatever it is, right? They're not stocking up and having foods in their pantry for weeks and months at a time. Like in Europe, if a strawberry lasts three days, like something's wrong, right? It's like, you know, some of the strawberries <laughs> we've picking lately are this big and they last for a week. Something's going on there, like, right? Like, yeah, so I mean, like so we do the best that we can and the best that you can is eating yeah. whole foods, yep. right? Yeah. Eating organic when you can. And like, it it's, doesn't have to be all the time, but when it, your majority of your diet is based around whole foods with, real cheats that are worth it. It's not worth it. Spit it out. I really mean that. Like if it's not worth it, don't do it. Like just because it's there, like save it for when it's, when it matters, save it for when yeah. it counts. And just like, you know, just giving yourself space and giving yourself time and just being kind to yourself. Yeah. Right. This doesn't have to be a horrible game in your head and, and with yourself. It's not, it's not hard. It's just a matter of like shaking it off and knowing what to do, having support to do it. And following through with it. I think another big thing with moms is you don't even realize how much you pick off your kids' plates. Yeah, that's true. You don't even realize it. Like, and, and we had, oh my God, I didn't even realize that I, well, we all, we've all done it, <laughs> but I didn't even realize I eat all the end of the chicken nuggets or the crust of the grill of meat. That's on the crust of the grilled cheese. Right. <laughs> well, you know, like we, we, we don't even realize how much we're picking off of our kids' plates. Yeah. And all that adds up and all that messes up your whole system. So I think being aware and like Karen just said, like balancing everything out. And, you know, if you have a plan, you're going to be a lot more successful. than if you go in blind and forget it, I don't even know what I'm doing, but you need a plan. You need support. You need education. Question for you guys. I don't know if you guys have gotten this or not before with your members um, or even you just hear it where someone says, you know, they're overweight or their genes, this is, these are my genetics and I cannot lose weight. Or they went to the doctors and the doctor diagnosed him with a particular thing. And now it's because I cannot lose weight or I cannot be a certain way because of my genetics or what I was diagnosed, right? Mm -hmm. So changing their mindset, have you ever gotten anyone like that and then changing their mindset? And no, it's not genetics. You're able to do it. Because someone can lose the weight, right? Yep. And then look completely different. So someone who's overweight will be like, that's your genetics. You can never lose the weight. But then they've done the work. Yep. And then look completely different. And then someone else is going to be like, oh, no, that's genetics. Oh, hell no. Did you see my before after? Yeah. It was so not genetics. That oh, yeah. was like workouts and eating better, right? Have you ever gotten anyone like that said that? That goes back to excuses. That's an excuse. Mm -hmm. That is a plain old excuse. It's an easy way out for them. Yeah. And I, I think, listen, it's definitely, it is easier for some than it is for others. Yes, correct. Some of the genetic thing, it's not that you can't lose weight. It just might be harder or slower. Yes. And when it's harder or slower, it's easier to give up. Mm. But when you don't give up and you keep going and you slowly chip away at it and you get to the person that you want to be, then it's just a matter of maintaining. Maintaining is so much easier than losing. Right? Like, oh, Yeah. Once you're at the place that you want to be, it is so easy to just kind of, bing, 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 you know, just stay right there. It's pretty easy. Now, it's just getting there. 
and, and also a lot right now did did the fibroid or the immune or whatever it is come first or did the obesity come first Ooh, right i don't know it could be it, it depends on the person right but is the obesity what's causing x y and z right and i, I don't want to say anything negative but like a lot of doctors don't have nutritional experience yep and that's okay that's yeah. okay but it's always like oh you have a thyroid condition so you're just gonna be big no, exactly. like, you, know, you may have to tackle it differently. And again, that goes back to every menu guide and every program is different for everybody. Yeah. When you hit menopause, you may have to completely change the way you've eaten, eaten, mm. eaten, <laughs> eaten. <laughs> from, I'm like that didn't sound right. <laughs> from, you know, from two years ago. Right. So like, depending on what's going on in your body, you may need to tweak and change how you eat. Exactly. That's why there is no one size fits all. I don't care what anybody says. Everyone cannot follow the same plan and get the same results. I mean, they say your body changes every seven years, mm -hmm. right? God, I, goodness. It's yeah. no, <laughs> yeah, but see, like I, I, we think of nutrition no different than exercise, right? We're, we're both in fitness too. So like if I use five pounds and do 10 reps every single day, I'm going to get change. After about four weeks, whatever I got, I got, right? It's not, I'm not going to get much stronger doing the same thing every single day. So you have to change it. You have to make it more challenging. You have to get through a harder workout. You have to have a really hard day and then an easier day. You have to change to make change. So when we teach in our, on our program, it's you have to get uncomfortable to get to the other side. Just like fitness. And you have to keep changing. And when you find something that works for you, it's great. Stick with it. And then when it stops working and it's called a plateau and we've all heard of it, we're just going to tweak it a little bit. And what are we going to do to tweak it? And that could be literally like, cheat all weekend just shock the crap out of your body that's and true all, and then all of a sudden you go back to clean on monday like i wouldn't suggest doing this Love in the it. first four weeks of doing it because your body <laughs> is still trying to adapt to what you're wait, wait doing, a minute yeah right? I you go back to a big cheat your body's gonna go back to exactly what it knows right but when you're clean for long enough that big cheat on the weekend actually snaps you into going down and creating a new baseline for yourself yeah. so even when you're at your best self and you want to even get a little further like all you have to do is make a little change Mm -hmm. whether that's fasting and you've never fasted before, right? Maybe you want to be vegetarian for a week, like do something crazy and different so that your body reacts and it's no different. And we just help you. And the, and the more, you know, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it, the more, you know, the easier it is to keep following down that path. It's not just six weeks. It's not just eat this. Don't eat that because that is never, you're never going to sustain that. You I know, that's, you. that's the key. Ladies, oh my goodness, so many takeaways. I can literally just talk to you guys for hours on this, um, but I know I don't wanna take so much time because I value your guys' time. So thank you so much for joining us today. But before we leave, I like asking everyone um, when they're on the show, what is your definition of a bulletproof mindset? definition of bulletproof mindset. I think when uncomfortable comes in your way, having that courage and having the, having the guts to step forward and work through that uncomfortableness mm. instead of shutting down. Love it. Yes. Mine, mine would be like, like off, this was on the spot. Mine would be like, <laughs> okay, first of all, not using anything as an excuse and visualizing the next goal. Visualizing me, it's a very, very much a visual, visualization of what I, what, I, what I want next and how to, what does that look like? And don't find the excuses because it's so easy to blame. Yep. Yeah. And just, you know, admit when you're wrong and move on. Yeah. Another one I just thought, I just have to. Three tips, three quick tips. <laughs> that you can give our tribe, our listeners, when they're trying to kind of make some quick little changes to either boost the immune system or help them eat a little bit cleaner? Three things. Three things, water. Water, 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 water. If you are hydrated, that helps, yes, yes, that helps move everything. Okay, so water is key, number one. Number two would be I would honestly say, start adding a probiotic in. Ooh. Gut health is just so important. It's so easy to do that. Just take it every morning or take it every night with your water. 
So yeah, I like that. <laughs> you see how they did that? <laughs> and I think the remembrance of being kind to yourself Ooh. and balance, mm. right? Knowing that that food is fuel and like, like, like it's, it should be a pleasure to be eating healthy, yummy foods that nourish your body. I think that the mindset shift in that is huge. And I, with the mindset, I think start, even if you don't change anything, just be aware of what you're doing so that you can make the change. If you're totally unaware of what you're doing, you're not going to be able to change it. So even if it start, means like writing down everything you eat, and that means like when you go to pick, if you know you have to write everything down and you go to pick up your kid's chicken nugget and you have to write it down, you're going to be like, oh, wow, I didn't even know I was doing that. Yep. Didn't even realize I was eating the chicken yep. nugget. So becoming really mindful of what you're doing so that you know what to change. I think that's a great start. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Life is an awareness game. Yes. Life yes. is an awareness game. Well, thank you, Lori and Karen, yeah. again, for gracing us here with your presence and your wisdom and your energy. Because I think you guys are so badass. Mm -hmm. If our listeners want to link up with you guys, where can they find you? Um, our website is cleancutfitfit.com. And Facebook, Clean Cut Fit, and Instagram, Clean Cut Fit Nutrition. Awesome. Perfect. And then I'm also going to add that onto the notes. So everyone is going to have all your information there if you guys want to link up with these amazing women. And then also, we're part of the mastermind with Todd Durkin. And that's how I've had the honor and pleasure of meeting these amazing women here today. And you know me, I like to leave you guys with a little nugget, a little quote. So for today, I have a couple. I have three quotes, actually. Um, the first one is, you can't exercise a bad diet. Boom! You can't Bam. exercise a bad diet. And if you can't read it in the ingredients, neither can your body. I love that one, by the way. <laughs> your body can't. Like, no. it's good. It cannot. Your body doesn't know what a chemical is. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. It knows what to do with good food. And then when diet is wrong, when diet is wrong, medicine is of no use. Yes. When diet is correct, medicine is of no need. I love that. I love that one. That is isn't an amazing it, one. Isn't it true? Right? Yeah, so true. So our tribe out there, make sure you're really becoming aware of what you are putting in your body. So because when you are eating better, you are feeling better. Again, thank you for joining us today. If no one has told you that you are amazing, that you are worthy, you're kicking ass, we are telling you that you are amazing. And remember, it all begins and ends in your mind. Go out there and be powerful. Love you guys. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.